Hi, and welcome to the Bookish Stitcher podcast. My name is Jeanette. You can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as Bookish Stitcher. And today, my husband, Will, is back. Hello. And uh, you guys may remember him. He sat in after I went to the fiber knitting retreat in Michigan to hear about what all. And so I think we said on that that he also knits. And so he's going to show his knitting today and kind of help me with the oodles of prize drawings. So um, we have a Ravelry group, and it's going strong. We're doing lots of knit-alongs and lots of uh, different prize stuff right now. We have a 200-member giveaway going on in there, so be sure to enter, enter for that. You have to be a member of the group, so go join if you're not, and then enter for that. And um, I'll be talking about all the knit-alongs and different stuff as we move through the podcast. But um, I'll let my husband tell about kind of what we've been doing. I haven't been on Ravelry as much because we've been busy, so I'll let him. And you haven't gotten in as much as you want to. I either. haven't gotten, I know. Just <laughs> pretend there's content. This has been, we'll make been up for it with crazy. our charm. Yeah. Um, so yeah, my parents and my sister are in town because it's Christmas and um, we coerce them to come to us so we don't have to fly two kids. Um, and um, it's been fun. I guess we've gotten some, gotten just a lot of hangout low-key time. Obviously, we, we did Christmas and, and all that. Uh, we went up to your mom's for a little bit on Christmas mm -hmm. My Day. brother was there and we got to see him. Yeah, so that was awesome. Um, lots of food. Um, and then I got some new board games for Christmas because I'm a dork and I didn't know what else to ask for. <laughs> so, um, she got me some cool games and uh, we've kind of tried those out on my parents mm -hmm. uh, when I was with us. And uh, So those have been fun. We did... Um, it's called the disease one. Everybody pandemic. Like pandemic. Um, so I guess it's been around for a while. It's a pretty popular game, but uh. Sorry, computer froze a bit there. Um, but uh, it's pretty cool because you all work together to eradicate diseases. And then there's a card game called Gloom that we played with your brother. It's pretty mm -hmm. awesome. Um, the cards are clear, and you put them on top of each other in stacks, so they the cards change what they do. Um, the the, the purpose of fun. Gloom is to kind of a silly game of like you you want to make the family that you're playing as sad as possible so you want to give other people happy life events like have other people get married and have your people get attacked by poodles attacked by poodles and driven to drink and all kinds of <laughs> this is funny good stuff, stuff. Um, so it was really fun and uh, I got another board game uh, from called Seasons um, which is way too complex for them so we haven't and we saw yet, some movies. Said. And um, so um, you and my sister got to go out uh, to see the Disney Into the Woods movie. It was really good. Um, so. I was in the play of Into the Woods in high school, and so it's a favorite of mine. I was trying not to sing along in the theater. <laughs> and um, it's really good. I was Meryl Streep is amazing, and Johnny Depp as the wolf is great. Uh, that song was a little bit creepy, the Into the Woods Johnny Depp singing, but yeah. And then you and I. And then yesterday, we went to go see The Hobbit, which was nice. So I saw the, the 3D um, version that has the, um, whatever, it's a lot more frames per second, which always freaks me out. But <laughs> the movie was really cool. It was fun. Seeing the and snow then, fall in 3D was yes, really Yes, the, the snow was awesome. Yeah. Uh, some cool battle scenes and all that, of course. Yeah, yeah, I won't give it away if you haven't seen it, but there was a part that made me sad. And I get into the battle scenes, I'm like, no, go, go get them, <laughs> go. Yeah, so that was pretty fun. And, um, uh, we had some good food. Everybody, and my husband's uh, dad is an amazing cook. Uh, Sister-in-law made some stuff. I made some stuff. Do you want to move mm -hmm. the mouse so it keeps yeah. going? Sorry. But um, I think that's about it. Uh, and, you know, the kids got, my daughter got oh, an entire dollhouse of calico critters, which are little, like, bunny family. And yeah crazy amounts of tiny pieces, but uh, we decided to take all the tiniest pieces and put them in a plastic bag for when she's a little bit older. And my son wanted a tablet, and he's been enjoying that. Mm -hmm. And I got my wheel, of course, as you guys know. And I'm also getting a lazy Kate so that I can ply the yarn because I, can't, I don't really have anything to show you guys on the spinning front because I'm waiting to ply it. Yeah, she, she spun a little bit and she kind of looked around and she's like, I guess I'm done. <laughs> I guess Can't I could have him. He's really good at randomly rigging up stuff with connects. I could probably invent a lazy case. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't but, seem that hard. Um, so I might do that if I get really desperate while waiting for my actual lazy case. 
But so let's see, what is next? Um, next up is your your Tech Buddy podcast group. So <laughs> we actually, cool. I actually have a show notes this time. Um, so the knit alongs we have going on right now, the, the er, that ended as the season of giving one ended, and the blanket cow is still going on. We're going to be starting since it's going to be 2015. We're going to be starting our 15 oldest, and um, also, a sweater knit along, and I'll talk about that when I show off my enabling. But um, let's get into FOs. I had some FOs, but yes. I gave them. Uh, those felted men's and one for my mother-in-law uh, slippers that I did out of peace fleece, those have been gifted. And I have to thank my awesome husband who sewed in the uh, top part of the slipper to the thing because he's very good at being meticulous. And I'm like, oh, when is this going to be done? So he helped with that. And he did, did a that, great job. Did that last 1%. So. <laughs> and um, so let's talk about our current whips. I will go with what I have right now. This is for the Get Your Yarn Wish Granted. And I was going, I meant to look up the name of who I'm doing these for. But I will definitely have, no, I think it's Chris, I don't know. Um, but this is must that must stash yarn in the candy crush colorway and what this was was an Instagram thing where it was get your yarn wish granted and somebody said that their wish was hand knit socks so I'm making them hand knit socks last week I was right here and so I tried to work on these a lot even though I didn't get much knitting time this week I did that so it's really pretty and they're coming along I am almost ready for the heel so that then the cuff should just zoom right on by. And then next work in progress. Can you hand me my uh, healthy? Oh, and this is a girl cave bag. It's a bag. That's yeah. Mm -hmm. This is my healthy yarn bag. I love woodland creatures. And these are my Christmas socks that did not mm. get done for Christmas. In fact, they're very far from being. Well, I'm almost done with the first one. Can you move the mouse? Yeah. And so. Here's that. I just kind of have the cuff left on this, and then I have to knit the second one. Get a drink of my tea because my it's really it's not cold, cold, but it's kind of rainy and slightly chilly here, so my voice is being weird. It's about as winter as it gets. Yeah. But, uh... And then last, oops, and then last thing I have. Can you hand me that one? Mm -hmm. Um. Oh, and that yarn is North Pole yarn. Sorry about that. It's North Pole yarn in the Jack Frost colorway. Last thing I have in my storied yarns bag is my mouse from my, my last Christmas present. It isn't yet done. I feel a little sad because I haven't done this, but it's almost done. This is the Bonnie Lee mouse for my daughter. And the yarn is another crafty girl in the Swedish chef colorway. And I'm heavily modifying this pattern because the original pattern calls for a wee mouse, as it, the name suggests. And I wanted to use up all this yarn. It's such cute yarn, and I wanted a bigger mouse because it's for a stuffy for a child to like love on and hug. So I am doubling stitch counts in certain areas and doubling row counts in certain areas, and I'm going to put some notes in my project page so you can kind of see what it is. It's so cute. And I'm um, going to add eyeballs and finish off the head. I've got the ears. Ears are done, and they're really cute. And that's all my works in progress. You want to talk about yours, honey? Sure. I uh, have one work in progress, and I probably will for <laughs> the next. I just did this without looking. I'm excited. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and uh, I probably will for the next year. But um, this is my Doctor Who bag. Well, it's yours, but you're loaning it to me. He always awesome. was saying how. Why do you have so many project bags? But then now that he's knitting this, I've got, he gets to knit his. I got respect. That's right. <laughs> So it, it's cool to have, um, but I'm knitting the iconic thing from Doctor Who, the uh, the 16 foot long scarf or whatever it is. So that's my very start of it. Um, I and guess he's I, in the middle of a row, so it's I'm hard in, to I'm in, yeah, I'm mid row, so it's a little bit hard to see, but it's going okay. I kind of um, I did the first two colors, and then I was on pause until we ordered the rest of the yarn. Mm -hmm. Um, I didn't think he would actually do it, <laughs> uh, and I wanted to see if he enjoyed it before I bought yeah, all the yarn for that whole entire scarf. Because it's a lot, a lot of different colors, and 
And I don't know what the yarn is, but it's something that has all the colors. It's Knit Picks Wool of the Andes. There you go. So that's what's worse today. And uh, it's nice. It looks good. The, the brown that I'm doing now is kind of flecked with other that's stuff. That's the back side. No shirt and the front yeah, side. Yeah, absolutely. Let me see. I don't know if I can get it close enough, but... Yeah. You what did you say that was called? Uh, it's, uh, it's Heathered. Heathered. There you go. Um, so yeah, it's fun. And um, my goal is to finish it by next October because I originally started it this October with the insane goal of having it ready for, for Halloween. Halloween. He's going to knit this huge scarf I've, when he's never knit before in a month. Yeah, exactly. So I, I was, just smiled and said, yes. Yeah, sure. You can do that. It'll work. Um, you just have to knit like a foot a day. <laughs> You'll be fine. We did, we did the math on it. I was like, sure. <laughs> You can knit 12 inches a day. Go right ahead. Um, and, uh, but anyways, I've always, I always want to be something for Halloween, something fun, like like King Arthur from Monty Python's uh, Holy Grail, or you know something kind of dorky but really recognizable and just you know, sort of jokey. And um, so we like to watch um, shows at night a lot on Netflix, especially, and just and they have a, a whole series of classic Doctor Who's and. There's a ton with the fourth doctor, and so just, we saw the scarf. I was like, I should just do that. And wear a really long coat. It'd be really easy. Uh, but I could actually knit the scarf, so it'd be cool because I could knit something too. So mm -hmm. I'm uh, gradually getting there. So that's all our whips. Yeah. Um, okay, time for me to put this down. 15 oldest skeins. So 2015 for the Bookish Stitcher podcast group on Ravelry. 15 oldest skeins. Yay. And so I'm going to show you my 15 oldest skeins. And I'm going to later do a drawing for everybody who showed a picture of their 15 oldest skeins. And I wanted to tell you how this is going to work in the group. So I'm going to, I think, have an FO thread. And in the FO thread, you can have a total of, in your parentheses, 15 posts because there are 15 skeins. So if you have, like I have, one thing, three skeins that are going to be made into a sweater, you can post, like, picture of your sweater. Hey, are you? And then do a different post and be like, second post for second skein, third post, and just comment on something. But you can't have more than 15 posts in that, and you have to have pictures of your things. And I will be looking through that to kind of make sure. But nobody is going to police, like, is this your actual 15 oldest skeins? And if you've just started knitting and you only have 20 skeins, then just use, you know, the 15 you most recently purchased. But the whole point of this for me is go through your older stash. Do you still love, that's the cat. Yes. I hope it didn't wake my daughter up, she's napping. Um, so go through your older stash. Do you still love that yarn? If you don't, then find a new home for it. If you do, knit with it. So I'm gonna show you guys my 15 oldest skeins. I guess we'd be able to hear her if she woke up. So, you need to know? Yes. <laughs> this is some um, yarn pirate in the rust colorway. We've given me, you can just put it on the other side of the table. Don't look over your beard. And um, this is some Zabra Ball Crazy that I got on a yarn crawl. And this, I have three skeins of this that I got at a festival. And this is going to be made into the olive sweater for our sweater knit along that's going on through the end of March. You don't have to start it now, but if you start it, you just can't, you just need to finish it between January and the end of March. And I'm going to get a really awesome prize for you guys out of the DWF Fiber Festival. So this is Handmaiden. I love that yarn. It's awesome. And it's really pretty. If, it looks kind of very variegated, but when you look at it, in the ball, it's not as. So I think that's going to be really pretty. I mean, I'm going to use kind of a little bit of a purple as an accent color. Another skein of Zabraval. Some Madeline Tosh, or no, no. Some Malabriga sock in Persia colorway. That was another uh, yarn store purchase. A lot of these are, I discovered yarn stores very early, which I guess is good and bad. But, um, some Jitterbug, I was obsessed with this when I first started knitting. And that's in the colorway Castaneda. Um, okay, there's lots because it's 15. So 
This is some Fanny's Fingering White in the Sedona colorway. Another yarn store purchase. This was an Etsy purchase, actually. Um, this is Winter Woods by Girl Gone Loopy. It's really pretty. I love those colors. And then this was, uh, I believe, a Loopy U purchase. And this yarn is no longer available. Chewy Spaghetti. And then... Another yarn store purchase. This colorway was Autumn. It's very pretty. I just love it. And then another yarn store purchase. Holiday yarns. We're almost to the end, guys. A vacation souvenir yarn from years and years ago. This is when I first started knitting. I believe this was a trip to St. Louis. Yeah, St. Louis. Oh, yeah. So, Spirit Trail Fireworks. It's a pretty sandcastle colorway, I believe. Yep. Queen of the Mice. Mm -hmm. yep. This was yarn that I won on a yarn crawl. I was very excited because I won something. And it's held socket. And then last one. I do not know if this person is still dying, but if they are, you should go check them out. I tied it onto here. So <laughs> so I said not knitted, that sounds bad. <laughs> yeah, but you are a knitter. It's a sock pixie. Here, let me see if I can get it close enough. And it's sockpixie.com. And this colorway is Lady in Aqua Room. And she, at the time when I got this, was doing different yarn colors based off of classical paintings. It's really, really pretty. I love that. There's that. And I, that's all, empty bag. So that's all, it's a huge amount. And I'm excited to knit with this yarn that I've had and loved for so long. And um, thanks for all the pattern recommendations and everything like that. So I will be getting to that and you guys will be seeing that more. What's next on our show list? We've got drawings. Drawings, yay, okay. So I drew some of these ahead of time because this is, there's a ton. So sheet of winners. I, I, yeah, okay. December giveaway, the winner was post number 30, Real Yankee, and I will be going to your thing and picking out a pattern. The blanket cow thing, sorry guys, the blanket cow winner was post number 146, Celestia 22. Good for you. Just give me your address and I'm going to mail them to you. And then the season of giving. First one, Fiber Nymph. Fiber at post 165, a good yarn. That's yours, a good yarn. Second one, Cuppy Cake Yarns, post number 46. And this is yours, Angie from J Ship. Wait, is that how you say that? Sounds good to me. Angie Ship. Oops, it's upside down. That's yours. And then the Knit Clips. Uh, they were kindly, oops, generously donated. These others are mine. Um, these go on the end of your knitting needles. It's, a, it's the full set. Um, it goes to post number 124, Tokyo City Girl. So contact me, Tokyo City Girl. And the last prize is an ebook of your choice, either Road Trip or Curls, which are two. And if you have both of those, then I can get you a different one. But the winner of that was post 98, Kiki Lucy. And so the last drawing we have, I'll move the mouse to keep it going, <laughs> and I, it's the 15 oldest skeins, and I just wanted to make sure you guys know that, okay, that's a blank one, okay, I'm going to put those in, yes. Sonic Freak, Yarning for a Smile, Ironical Knitter, L, -E -L me cool. Linda, Lady Rosetta, Night Owl Knitter, Classical Cat, and that one's empty too. I had some extra ones just so you guys know. So I will hold the bag, shake it up, and I'll let him draw. Don't look. Shake it up too. And this is for a free pattern of your choice. 
uh, Ironic Omitter, let me know what pattern you want and I'll leave it at. So thank you everybody for sharing pictures of your 15 oldest games and there's a lot of great chatter going on in that group and I'm glad everybody's so excited about the idea of knitting with their 15 oldest games. Very cool idea. Uh, enabling? Enabling. Okay. So this came in the mail. It was a pre-order from November. It's Christmas yarn in the Jingle Bells from Cuppy Cakes. As you guys know, I really love her yarn. And um, it's going to have a bag and stitch markers that came that come to it. It was in a set, but they got stuck in customs, so I have to wait for those. And I got yarn for the sweater knit along because Night Owl Knitter generously gifted me. Um, oh, I was knit, gave, I was gifted some patterns this week too as well. Uh, so Night Owl Knitter generously gifted me the ease sweater. So I'm going to knit it out of this, and this is Malabrigo Rios in the. And um, so I got enough for a sweater for that. But I also wanted to thank Celestia22. She gave me uh, the pattern Mondo Cable Cardi this week. And I think that's the only one I hope I'm not forgetting anybody. If I am, I go back and look through my show notes. If I am, I will mention you next week, I promise. Um, last enabling. Since I don't have any plied spinning to show you guys today, I have some beautiful fiber. Stuff is awesome. So this is a company called Rin and Ollie, and I have, I've always admired their stuff, but it was too expensive um, so for me to just like randomly buy. So as a Christmas splurge gift, it got me this. They got me this for Christmas, and it's two different things. This one is called Sweet Dreams, and it came with a ribbon, but I took it off to show my family, but it's so soft. I can't even believe how soft it is. It's really pretty. And it's a bat, as you can see. And the other thing is a flower. It's a, a sprinkles, bumps, and bats. And this is a bump, I believe. Yeah. And so you pull from the center. And it really shines. It has Angelina, Merino, and Tessa Silk. And it's just so pretty. And this colorway is called Bloom. It goes from a sand, like a creamish white sand, to a red, to a light pink, back to the brown. I think that'll make a really pretty shawl. And then I'll tip my pee. A little bit of book enabling for you guys. I got two books for Christmas. Everybody knows my love of Russian history. This book on the Romanov sisters by Helen Rappaport. I'm excited to read that. And then this one I put on my Goodreads to ask for for Christmas because it has my name and even though it's spelled wrong because my name only has one N instead of two, but Hampton Sides is a brilliant historical nonfiction writer. And um, he's author of the best-selling uh, Ghost Soldiers, but this is In the Kingdom of Ice, The Grand and Terrible Polar Voyage of the USS Jeanette. So I get to read A Terrible Voyage of My Ship. So I'm excited to read those. That's all my enabling. Now what do we have left? Uh, book. Book. Book time. So I'm going to let him <coughs> kind of right. start us off. So besides being a more prolific knitter, you're more, way more prolific reader than I am too. But I still, I need a tiny bit and I read some. You have to show it. And I love reading. I just don't make enough time for it. Um, but this one, uh, Jonathan you. Strange and Mr. Norrell. Yeah, it's a little bit shiny. Uh, by Susanna Clark. I think it was her first novel, and it came out like 10 years ago. Um, and we come at this from slightly different... I listened to the audiobook. Yeah, so you listened to the audiobook, and then following up, I read it like yeah. after you did. And this, it was earlier this year, I think, that I read it. But, mm. And I think well, if we were doing Siskel and Ebert, you'd maybe give it a thumbs up. Oh, yeah, definitely. You, you, so you liked it. I got it, like obsessed with it. Like It was in my dreams. <laughs> like, Yeah. Um, you know, it's about... The two characters on the cover, Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell, um, and it's a British author, and it happens in England. And basically, kind of the premise is that England used to be full of magic, and it kind of died out, and nobody did magic anymore. And then there's this guy who 
like studies magic, and his name is Mr. Miller, and he's collecting books of magic. And, and he's kind of obsessed with about keeping magic to himself. Yeah, so he wants to, con he, like, he buys all the books so no one can else have them. No one else can have them. Um, and stuff. And so he can do some magic, and he kind of messes it up. But it, it's, I think, and the Jonathan, Jonathan Strange, Strange becomes his apprentice? Yeah, so How does that Jonathan happen? Strange is younger, and he just hears about Mr. Miller because he starts to make the news, basically in the papers. And kind of comes to him, and they meet, and he becomes his apprentice because he can't learn very much. He doesn't have many books or anything, and um, because Mr. Miller bought them all. Um, but they they um, have different viewpoints about how magic should be. Um, there was this. Is the Raven King getting away too much? No. Anyways, the, there's a character in, in British magic history that they that they disagree over called the Raven King, and. It's it's just really interesting. I, I love for some reason I love these like alternate history because they they kind of follow British history and the history of the book and it takes place during uh, uh, the war with Napoleon uh, around eighteen hundred. But um, you know it, it changes things in history. Like this didn't happen because of this war. It happened because of magic or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and it's I, those are always normal history. yeah. So those are always those are always interesting to me. And I just the way that they Our cast are going crazy. <laughs> The way that they, hopefully, I'll find blood on the floor when we get up there. No. Yeah. Just kidding. We never have. Uh, but anyways. And they each kind of become obsessed with magic in their own yeah. way. Yeah. And so it's it's just really Bad fascinating. Bad things happen. Yeah. It's, it's like a dark the, story. It is. It is really dark. There's like there's fairies involved, and like the fairy of like the old fairy, like you know, the the evil kind of manipulative trickster fairies, and it's just. All kinds of cool, crazy twists and turns. People get and stolen into magical worlds. Yeah, and the way that the main characters, it's not just about the main characters, but it kind of centers around them. And it's really interesting because they have flaws, but they're very different flaws. Mm -hmm. And at the end, they've, they've matured, but they're not really heroes or anything. But there's a, there's a real good conclusion to it. I feel like some books that are like kind of like dabbling in fantasy like this and kind of just having fun with the characters don't really have a great conclusion, but this is really fascinating. There's some scenes that are just like <laughs> the cats. The, <laughs> they're pretty amazing. The imagery in it's this book is excellent. Incredible. And so, how many pages does it have? Just so that it's a bigger book. It is bigger. But I like if you are at all into like I I, I read some fantasy, I'm not hugely into it, but if you're into it at all, um, it's seven hundred and eighty two pages. So it's pretty long. It's in the hardcover version. Which, I mean, that's just a better value for your book, right? There I think go. of all that enjoyment. It's like fingering but, weight yarn versus worse. Yeah. <laughs> it's, but it is absolutely amazing. Yeah. I really, really loved it. So, And so that's all we have for this week, guys. I It's funny because I thought this was going to be like a 45-minute show, and then I didn't have any knitting. So, so, you know, that was everything we have. I look forward to knitting along with you guys this upcoming year with um, the 2015 oldest skeins and sweater and I'm going to get back to my blanket. I am falling behind on the blanket no longer. Since it's cold, I did get more yarn from Knit Picks for that giant, the big cozy blanket. So I think I'll try to work on that tonight. But I hope you guys have a great end to your 2014 and oh, what I'm going to be doing on New Year's Day. I just want to talk about oh, this yeah. really quick. So my whole thing for that I do for, for New Year's Day is a Harry Potter marathon. <laughs> and I thought about maybe casting, normally I cast on one project and knit as much as I can through the Harry Potter marathon. And my son will watch the first ones with me until it gets kind of scary. Yeah. And this year I think what I want to do is cast on a new project for every movie. Because you've fin finished so many things. Yeah, I'm not going to have... I wanted to have everything off the needles for the end of the year, but I'm not going to make that, sadly. But, um, so I think I might cast on a new project for every, mo for every movie, one of the Harry Potter. That would mean I would have way too many things on the needles. But, or some somewhere around there, maybe. See how many things I can get off the needles and then kind of have the total equal eight because there are eight movies. So a, I might have the Ravelry group open, and if anybody wants to join in at any point and chat, we can. I thought that would be great. And I just, yeah, I, that's a fun tradition that I have. And he kind of watches some of it with me between mm -hmm. 
stuff we're doing with the kids and <laughs> the mouse started going. But anyways, have a great end of your 2014, like I said. And I look forward to talking to you guys again in 2015. And Cheers. hopefully he'll be on again next couple months with a longer scarf. Eventually I'll show it off again. Yep. Okay. Bye, guys. Have a great rest of your weekend.